Hello and welcome back. And that's right, today I want to talk about a certain elephant in the room. Today I want to talk about Synology Active Protect and Synology Active Backup and why I'm ever so slightly nervous. A number of you, when I talked about uh, Synology Active Protect in summer 2023, this is a new dedicated backup appliance from Synology had slight mixed feelings, and I understand completely why. Um, you know, let's you know be completely devil's advocate, be completely objective about this. Synology Active Protect. It sounds like a great bit of software. It really is. I've had hands on with it at several different events, and I really like what I'm seeing there. This is a completely dedicated backup appliance for backups, virtual appliance, bare metal uh, backup appliances, local operating system, site to site, site to site, huge deduplication and space reductions, direct virtual machine uh, redeployment from your cloud-based services, again, your VMware, your Microsoft Hyper-V and stuff directly onto bare metal when needed. It's a one panel access point to monitor all of your backup operations, small and big on multi-site operations. All of this happening with cloud-based management, intelligent alerts, human understanding in terms of the notifications and what they are doing. Everything about it sounds great. But it also sounds a lot like something Synology have had for a long time now, which is Synology Active Backup, a free backup appliance that's included in DSM that provides around 80 to 90% of what Synology's Active Protect platform is already promoting. Now, that isn't to say that the two things are identical. They're really not. Active Protect is the operating system, it is the one portal direct in user-friendly business backup service. I like it when I have seen it. It is incredibly user-friendly, definitely compared to the bulk of backup services I've used to date. On top of that, I would say that Synology have been working on something like this for a long time, and it's all seemingly been added up to it. If you look at DSM, there's been numerous different backup appliances, synchronization appliances, everything from hyper backup to simple USB backup, if you like. And with integration and merging between applications like Drive and Synology Virtual Machine Manager, and of course, all of that being funneled one way or another into uh, active backup, it became almost inevitable as the brand kind of starts poking more and more towards the hyperscale the unified storage, the enterprise, that something like this was going to be rolled out, the dedicated one at one function appliance. We saw it with Synology BSM and B Station. It is inevitable. I am inevitable. This video is not about me ragging on Active Protect because I think it's a really good platform and I do know a lot of businesses that don't want to buy a NAS to run Docker. They don't want to run a, a NAS to run fancy, fun, you know, homebrew applications. They want it for backups and backups alone and having backups across multiple sites that are done seamlessly makes all the more sense to them. My beef isn't with the software. My concern and my beef is what happens with active backup. Right now, you can have active backup for business, active backup for workspace, uh, uh, Google Workspace, and active backup for uh, Microsoft Office 365. And what happens after Active Protect is established? Because then, Synology, you've got two horses in the race. And... Right at that point, Synology's biggest competitor in Active Protect is itself in Active Backup. And Active Backup, by the way, is not exactly brain science. It's straightforward, actually. It's quite easy to use. And I would argue if you wanted something, you know, user friendly right now, Active Backup for Business is a phenomenal option within DSM that is license-free. It's included with your system. It is available across more than half of the Synology hardware in the market, included with the price. Also with it, you have the rest of the applications. Again, Hyper Backup, Drive, and all the other companion applications in the collaboration suite, the virtualization, surveillance, all of that stuff all built in, which then brings it round to how will Synology promote active protect when their biggest competitor is themselves which is my worry because if i was a business and i was in a cutthroat mood and i'm not saying they are i would look at the thing i'm giving away that's effectively free within the appliance that i sell and go 
Hmm, clip, 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 clip. I think about that. Not so much killing it, but at the very least grandfathering it. I've not got any indication that some of you are going to do that, but I think we can see how this would happen. Now, let's take another example, Synology B Station. I mentioned it earlier on. Synology had lots of different value series devices. There was a standard class, where there still is. There's the J series, the SE series, the Play series. They had lots of value series appliances. And over the last two to two and a half generations, they've slowly whittled it down and got rid of, from what I can see, the J series for the most part. The 220J still exists, but the bulk of them have now gone into the standard ARM class and you've got the B station that's been rolled out. Now, we've already seen indications of a new B station that we talked about before, but more importantly, when Synology roll out B station, it wouldn't surprise me if they start rolling applications from DSM into BSM to simplify things and include some of those domestic class applications. Again, no indication, this is all hyperbole, this is all, um, you know, my guesses. But running BSM, then running their router software, don't forget about their router software as well, Synology Router Management, then running uh, this new Active Protect appliance, running all these different operating systems, that's notwithstanding, running a lot of their surveillance platforms. Now we're seeing their surveillance cameras run out, not only with their own first party cameras that work on Synology NAS systems, but also rolling out uh, the C2 surveillance station that runs surveillance station NAS free in the cloud. That is just so many irons in the fire for a comparatively small company in the grander scheme of IT. In NAS, they're the big dog, but once you compare them to your Dells, your NetApps and more, there is a scaling difference. Again, it is a question of resources, and as much as I like Active Protect, I thought we should have a little discussion today about Active Backup and what might happen. Let me know what you guys think in the comments, because I want to talk about this. We've already seen changes like this happen for popular and frankly unpopular means. So it'd be great to talk about this more and more. Ultimately, as I say, I like Active Protect, everything I've seen of it, and I will probably recommend it to businesses I talk to as a simple backup solution for their business where everything is just done like that. We've still got no confirmation on pricing, by the way, on that and licensing. So that is still a caveat in the air for me. But nevertheless, this is about what happens to active backup afterwards.